वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मुनीष अहलावत फ्रॉम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ होटल मैनेजमेंट देहरादून टुडे वी शैल बी टेकिंग मॉड्यूल नंबर थ्री टाइटल ले आउट ऑफ किचन डिपार्टमेंट अंडर पेपर फूड प्रोडक्शन ऑपरेशन एंड मैनेजमेंट द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल आर टू स्टडी एंड अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ प्रॉपर किचन ले आउट एंड डिजाइन पॉइंट्स टू बी कंसिडर्ड वाइल डिजाइनिंग अ किचन इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ किचन ट्राइंगल इंट्रोडक्शन अ किचन इज एंड इनक्लोज स्पेस इन विच एडिबल फूड मटीरियल्स आर ब्रॉड टूगेदर कंबाइंड एंड कुकड इन डिफरेंट वेज फॉर कंजम्पन इट फॉर्म्स द हब ऑफ फूड प्रोडक्शन एक्टिविटी इन एनी इंस्टीट्यूशनल फूड सर्विस एस्टेब्लिशमेंट The space provided is not only planned as a work center for meal provision but also acts as the area for social interaction of staff who come together for work from different culture and educational backgrounds. The kitchen is therefore the focal point for cleaning, storing, cutting, peeling, cooking, holding food materials and dishes. washing up waste clearing and so on planning kitchen spaces therefore require appreciable investment in the form of money for equipment hiring staff with varied skills time energy and other material resources some institutional kitchens operate round the clock others keep staff working long hours in both routine and creative jobs kitchen spaces therefore require a lot of thought in planning and organization to make them worth while for the employees in terms of comfort and enjoyment and for the institution in terms of profitability size and types of kitchen the size of the kitchen will vary according to the nature and amount of work to be done in it usually The space allowed to a kitchen is approximately half that of the dining area but the ratio varies with the size and type of establishment and the menu pattern If kitchen has to service only the adjacent room its size is usually 40 to 45% of the dining area If it provides food to the coffee shop banquet hall room service etc as in a large hotel the kitchen may be as much as 33% more than the dining area if a separate bakery shop is provided it is usually 20% of the kitchen area for a coffee shop the kitchen space allotment is usually 7 square feet 0.6 meter square per guest room as it provides quick service the coffee shop kitchen is usually 1/4 the area of the shop thus the size of the kitchen varies directly with the type of establishment and its service style in a kiosk for example where ready to serve snacks are displayed for sale and the only preparation consists of making eggs to order or sandwiches tea and coffee the size of the preparation area will be very small compared to the area in a food service where meals have to be prepared and held hot or heated before serving as a rule it is good practice to provide a compact arrangement of work tables and equipment so that unnecessary time and effort involved in extra walking stretching and bending is avoided as a general guide 2.5 meter into 3 meter is sufficient for a single person to work in while 2.5 meter into 4 meter provide comfortable working space for two persons every kitchen should also provide at least 9 to 10 meter square floor area clear of furniture fittings and stored goods for every three people working in it for every additional person an extra 7.5 meter square would be necessary 
in large canteens the size and space of spaces provided for food preparation activity will be affected by the size and type of equipment their placement and the kitchen area in relation to the receiving storage and service areas too large or too small a kitchen space to accommodate the necessary equipment will lead to inefficiency in the use of the space too small a space will hinder work because of overcrowding while too large a space will involve extra walking causing unnecessary fatigue to workers most importantly the high cost of the wasted space will reflect unnecessarily high fixed cost adversely affecting profitability spaces can be used for a single purpose or adapted to perform a number of functions for example the aisle leading to the service area can be utilized for food preparation activity out of service hours by the use of work surfaces which fit into aisle walls when not in use initiative is necessary to develop spaces while designing them to promote their usefulness this is important especially in the planning of kitchens with very little scope for expansion in terms of measurements kitchens may take different shapes according to how much space is available in a building for the production and service of food and where this space happens to be is located kitchens vary from square rectangular u shaped l shaped parallel to a single or straight line with dimensions varying according to the need of particular catering establishments square kitchen the square kitchen is not so common as the distance from one wall to another is more and requires much walking at work it is also difficult to use the center space effectively except for an aisle or for odd jobs that may even come in the way of the main cooking and preparation activity all plumbing electricity and gas connections are best brought to wall ends rather than having pipes and drains under floors in the center of the kitchen if this is done any leaks that may occur will flood the center of the kitchen making it unhygienic and unsafe as well as difficult to work in rectangular kitchen rectangular kitchens are a very common shape in catering establishments and generally used where a lot of activity is undertaken for most of the day in large establishments where many different types of menus are served and more space is required rectangular kitchens prove useful ample examples can be seen in hospitals large restaurants and central kitchens u shaped kitchen u shaped kitchens are the most efficient type being compact and step saving doors are located at the end of the u and the dining area around the three sides of the room the sink unit is placed in the end wall or inside the u with a window over it there is no chance of criss crossing in such a plan and work flows easily from one center to the next counters can be fixed to come down on either side and provide additional service space during peak hours and can be folded back against the walls after service hours l shaped kitchen l shaped kitchens make use of two walls adjoining at right angles it is an efficient design where floor space is limited extra space can be created by use of revolving shelves 
installed in a cabinet at the base of cooking and sink units. It is very useful shape for small canteens, kiosks, tea and coffee shop, parallel kitchen. In parallel kitchens, the sides of passages may be utilized while the center space acts as an aisle. The passage may be slightly screened off on one side for service during peak hours. This sort of plan is best suited to cafeterias of the self-service types. The shape is suitable for midday meals in schools where dining facilities are not possible. The central passages with the walls at least 1.2 or 1.5 meters apart can be used for children to squat on mattresses and eat the plated food served. More often, children like to eat standing or playing and so carry the food away from the area of service. Straight line kitchen. This is sometimes referred to as an I-shaped kitchen. It is useful arrangement for kiosks, tea shops, the straight line kitchen or mobile vending units. The extra storage is created on the walls or under sinks through cabinets. For service, there is a provision for a platform or extended counter outside a window. Window spaces can be shelved and covered with wire mesh shutters to increase display space and protect from flies, while at the same time providing enough ventilation in small spaces. Combination of shapes Any of the shapes discussed above can be combined to plan out a kitchen, depending on the space available in a building. Sometimes very different shapes can emerge during the process of renovation or expansion of catering facilities. In buildings where catering is not the main activity but forms an area that complements the main service such as accommodation, conferencing, etc. In hotels or medical services in hospitals, the space allotted to kitchen is usually what can be spared after the main service are planned. This can lead to unplanned space allocation ending up with shapes and sizes in which a lot of creativity and innovation is required to make it effectively operational and pleasant to work in. Developing kitchen plans Before any kitchen plan can be developed, it is important to follow four main steps. Formulate list of activities to be performed. Break activities into jobs or tasks. Work at the simplest ways of performing the task. Arrange tasks into sequences for smooth operation. Formulate a list of activities that are to be performed in the kitchen. In the process of scheduling, the activities are organized into a production cycle, which shows the sequence in which the listed activities are to be performed and their interrelationships. Each part, if the production cycle is then broken up into jobs or tasks which need to be performed in a particular order to achieve the objectives of a food service establishment. If the menu for a canteen consists of small cakes, hot and cold beverages, a plated meal and sandwiches, each activity can be broken down into specific tasks for every item on the menu. Similarly, the task required for preparing hot and cold beverages, sandwiches and meals can be clearly defined. Once the tasks have been defined, one has to think of the simplest ways in which they can be performed. Activity area of activity Tasks Storage stores 
get flour, butter, sugar, eggs, cherries, etc. Collect all equipment required. Preparation Kitchen Sift powdered ingredients together, cream sugar and butter. Beat eggs and gradually add to the creamed mixture. Pipe or spoon mixture into cases or in cookie trays, placing a piece of cherry in the center. Cooking Kitchen bake in preheated oven for 10 to 20 minutes. Take out of oven and let cool on a wire rack. Serving Washing up canteen counter, washing center, arrange on a tray with cake cover and display for sale. Collect mixing bowls, beaters, spoons and baking trays and wash up. Transfer back to equipment storage till required. Any leftover cakes to be placed in refrigerator for the next day. Work simplification. Work can be simplified by viewing the kitchen and its activities from five different aspects, namely work area, workers area of each, workplace, equipment, materials and supplies. Movements at work, work area. This refers to the area of the work surface, its height from the flow, location of the equipment and materials to be used on the work surface. It is recommended that for a worker performing a task in the standing position, the height of the work surface from the flow should be just below the waistline so that there is no need to bend at the waist or hip while performing will result and if too high will cause undue muscular strain and fatigue. Surface heights should also be planned to vary with the nature of the activity. For example, a sink unit top should be higher than a food preparation surface to take into account the need for reaching down to the base of the sink in the former. Likewise, gas stoves should be fixed at a lower level than the work surface so that when a cooking pan is placed on it, the contents can be seen and stirred without standing on one stoves. When working in a seated position, unnecessary stretching or straining of the neck muscles should be avoided. For comfort, feet should rest flat on the floor so that an erect posture can be maintained. Worker Area of reach The body stature and reach characteristics of people directly influence the designing of the areas. The area of the work surface is determined by the area of reach of the average worker in different positions, as illustrated. A worker can reach any object in this area without stretching or moving other parts of the body. It is the most comfortable area of work involving the least amount of energy and providing the most effective view of materials and actions for a particular job. While performing any food preparation activities, items, part, prepared should be kept within the normal reach. Areas these will be required soon after to finish the dish. Items which have to be kept aside for 1-2 to two hours as in the case of soaking pulses and legumes. Marinating meats may be kept in the effective reach area whereas Foods or mixtures required to be kept overnight or longer as for fermentation, sprouting, etc. may be stored adequately in the maximum reach area. Movements of work One needs to become conscious of how body movements are related to the amount of energy consumed. For this, it is necessary to understand that the body has been designed so that its weight is evenly distributed over the legs, 
When working in any position, standing or seated, the center of gravity of the body is disturbed. This causes unequal distribution of weight on the legs resulting in extra energy consumption to maintain the body position. If the balance is continuously disturbed in any activity, muscles get tired and fatigue sets in. For all positions at work, therefore, one must keep the body in physical balance, that is, maintain correct posture to enhance comfort and conserve energy. In addition, the muscles of the body are so arranged that the large muscles occur at those points in the body which are mind to take up maximum strain. With this in mind, the largest muscle in the part of the body moved should be brought into operation whenever an action is performed. This fact is realized when we observe the sum of jobs are tiring for some people and not for other. This is because some people waste their energy because of wrong postures and therefore less energy is available for the job, which consequently does not get competed as best as possible and in the shortest possible time. Developing the art of muscle coordination to perform work with a tireless rhythm may require a conscious effort, but it is a worthwhile making it till it becomes a habit, the habit of not getting tired at work. Work space. The amount of space available for work is important for completing tasks efficiently. The space should be large enough to place all the materials and equipment required as well as allow for movement at work. In addition, extra space is necessary for placing completed parts of the work which needs to be kept aside till required again. For example, in making a salad, a number of vegetables or fruits may need to be cut or kept aside, away from the area of normal reach, which would be needed for the preparation of the salad dressing. Finally, all the parts for the salad would have to be put together before being served. Insufficient workspace will involve extra movements. In trying to go elsewhere to put away the partly or fully completed work and come back to the next activity. The workspace hold also allow for the keeping aside of used and unused equipment away from the food in the process. This can be done by using shelf space and areas under tables intelligently, equipment, materials and supplies. Equipment, materials and supplies all have to be considered in relation to the physical structure of the kitchen and the persons using them their placement, suitability, quality and quantity all determine how simple any work can be made. This awareness helps to establish plans that are economical in terms of human effort, time and other valuable resources. Any materials, supplies or equipment in regular use should be placed within the maximum reach zone. because. Activity is concentrated in the zone of normal reach. Shelves may be located within these zones for items which are used occasionally. This helps to increase the space within the work area. The normal and maximum reach zones are important in organizing work centers. If one remembers that reaching for an item by stretching upwards in less strenuous than reaching outwards or downwards. Therefore, heavier items are better kept on upper shelves. 
The energy used at work greatly depends on two basic factors, namely location of equipment and the manner in which it is stored. Location of equipment in the work area. Certain equipment may be better placed within each reach rather than stored in cupboards. For example, blender fixed in a work center requires much less effort to operate when needed than one which has to be removed from a cupboard every time a food item need to be blended. Manner in which it is stored. Equipment may be stored in a variety of ways. They may be kept in their boxes after each use, depending on the frequency with which they are required. Covered with weatherproof covers or left uncovered. The manner of storing will determine whether a piece of equipment requires cleaning before each use or not. In tropical countries, particularly where weather conditions change so often from dusty to rainy to dry and temperatures are conducive to harboring cockroaches, insects and flies. Attention in terms of a lot of time and energy is required for cleaning. As far as possible, equipment should be kept ready for use in the normal reach zone, along with other ingredients and supplies. Use frequently to complete any task efficiently. Designing Kitchen Designing kitchen involves a number of steps starting with collection information about the physical, operational and financial aspects of the space in which production of food is to be carried out. Physical aspects. These include location, structural details, the layout, storage spaces, services available and required, access to source of supply, staff and customers and other local requirements with respect to planning, environmental health, fire and other safety concerns. Location. This refers to the exact position of the kitchen in relation to the rest of the building. As far as possible, the kitchen should be adjacent to the service area and preferably in one corner of a building in a northwest or southeast directions. According to the Shilpa Shastra, however, the oldest known construction manual, the kitchen should be located in a southeast direction. The placement direction for internal structures for stoves, doors, windows, etc. is also mentioned. This provides two side walls for windows and free access to air and natural light. A corner location also makes it accessible by road for purposes of receiving supplies and removal of kitchen waste. The kitchen should be situated over ground to avoid flooding, drainage, backflow and unnecessary expenses on artificial lighting and ventilation. In basement areas, the humidity and heat of the kitchens also make them prone to dampness and infestation. Dear students, let's summarize. Now we have learnt about proper design and layout of the preparation area, that is, the kitchen which can make a major contribution to good food and better working conditions for the staff. Adequate workspace is a must for each process that is the part of a kitchen and every effort must be made that the layout of the kitchen focuses on the working, store area and the equipments to be employed. The area must be designed and based on the specifications of the operations. Thank you.